Hello, I'm Rod Pinkston and welcome to another episode of Jaeger Pro. One of our most often asked questions is how do you zero a thermal scope? Well, our optics guru, Brian Monhoff, is going to take us through this task step by step. Then we'll go to Webster County and remove another sounder using the most efficient process and products while teaching the art and science of integrated wild pig control. Hello guys, I'm Brian Mahanoff with Jaeger Pro. Today we're going to show you how to sight in a thermal rifle scope. We're going to focus on Pulsar using the Pulsar Trail and the Pulsar Thermion. The first step is to pick your reticle and reticle color using the controller on the left turret. You have many options, so pick whatever you feel comfortable with. Once you have these selected, adjust the eyepiece diopter ring and focus until you can read the letters at the bottom of the screen. Now adjust the front lens focus ring until you have the clearest picture. This target is set up at 100 yards. Before making any adjustments, fire one time at the center of your target. You can see my first shot was high and to the right. Go into the main menu and move the controller ring to the zeroing sub menu and quick press the controller button. Set the distance you will be shooting and confirm with a long press of the controller. Now select the zeroing icon with a quick press. Here you have four options. The freeze function is the third icon down. The menu will not time out in this setting, so take your time and center the reticle in the center of your target. When aligned, quick press the controller button to freeze the picture. Now move the selector up two icons to one digit elevation. Quick press the controller and you will see the X coordinate turn white with the triangle to the right. We want to put the X where the bullet impacted. Adjust the controller forward to move the reticle right. Once you have your windage close, you can quick press the controller and switch to the Y axis for elevation. Adjust the controller forward to move the reticle up. Now long press the controller button until you see windage elevation in the top left of the screen. And long press again until you see zeroing coordinates saved. Now we can take the second shot. Here you can see the second shot was good on the windage, but a little low. I'll repeat the zeroing process and move the reticle down to compensate. Now that we've confirmed zero, we can go into the field with confidence. Three, two, one. I hope this video will speed up the zeroing process on your new thermal optic. If you have any more technical questions, please contact me at brianatyagerpro.com or give me a call. One purpose of our Webster County project is the proof of concept that locals can be trained in an agricultural county and certified as hog control operators. I remember asking the 20 plus farmers that attended our first meeting, who is it that lives in this county that you already know, like, and trust? And the name Butch Potter was unanimous among all of them. Butch had been the Department of Natural Resources game warden for Webster County for the past 25 years. At 66 years old, let's watch Butch remove this sounder. Hi, I'm Butch. In this episode, we're going to examine the use of on-the-ground scouting to track a large group of pigs across three separate properties. 
The mission began in February after adding a new property to our project labeled A on the map, consisting of a 20-acre agricultural field and 200 plus acres of mature planted pines. Property B is 42 acres of fields and 40 acres of mixed hardwoods, and property C is 235 acres of fields surrounded by 90 acres of mixed hardwoods. Properties A and C are currently enrolled in the Webster County Feral Swine Project, a hog control operation encompassing 10,000 acres of farm and timberland in southwest Georgia. The owner of Property B elected not to participate in the project, however access was granted to hog control operators for scouting purposes. I began my reconnaissance on Property A with a quick vehicle drive through I was looking for any obvious hog signs as a starting point before gathering more thorough intel on foot. Extensive rooting was discovered on the edge of the 20-acre field adjacent to the planted pines and in a wildlife food plot in thick timber 575 yards southwest of the field. Foot patrol indicates that a large group is regularly traveling along the timber road between the field and the food plot. I followed hog track south into a field on property B to a large area of heavy rooting along the west side of the field. We erected a feeder filled with shell corn on property A with a mine camera to monitor activity. Let's see if we can find out just how many hogs we're dealing with. Three days after erecting the feeder on property A, the hogs show up. A total of 31 were documented actively feeding at the site. Three nights later, a large sounder of hogs were observed on property C, traveling from the south along the eastern edge of the field. Due to the distance involved, it was difficult to get a precise count on the number of hogs in the sounder. However, it appeared to be close to the same size as the group we saw on camera at property A. Okay, I got eyes on the hogs. Why didn't I engage? Sure, with a successful stalk and a steady aim, I could have made a good dent in their numbers but I would have also educated the others, making them much more difficult to remove. Our goal is 100% removal, expending the least amount of fuel, time, labor, and money. Time to come up with a plan. Looking at a map of the area, you can see that this siding was only 595 yards south, southwest of the rooting on property B, and 1,000 yards southwest of food plot A, where the hogs were documented feeding. You can also see areas of sparse scrub, heavy timber, and intermittent seasonal waterways, indicating likely bedding and travel routes. The wooded area between properties B and C was scouted on foot, and a heavily used trail was discovered running north to south. Now I have a pretty good idea of where they're bedding, feeding, and their travel routes. A trap was already in place from last season's operations on the east side of property C approximately 150 yards west of the trail. The decision was made to utilize the existing trap and attempt to lure the hogs in from their travel route. The trap was quickly retasked, batteries replaced in control boxes and cameras, feeders refilled with shelled corn, and a trail of sour corn lay between the feeder and the trail. Four nights later, the hogs began showing up. I monitored their arrival via the Jaeger Pro mobile app until a total of 28 were present feeding in the trap. It was apparent from recognizing distinct individuals from the pictures received on property A that these were the same group of hogs. The gate was dropped using the mobile app and we responded quickly to euthanize the sounder. A total of 31 hogs were documented in the capture, including two pregnant sows with 12 fetuses. Using foot patrol and camera intel, I was able to develop a mission plan that resulted in a 100% capture of documented hogs. Since we made this capture, area scouting has shown no crop damage from feral swine on any of the three properties. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Jaeger Pro, the art and science of integrated wild pig control. Army trained, combat tested, farmer approved. We'll see you next week. Call or visit us on the web to purchase the latest equipment or learn more about the process and products needed to eliminate feral pig populations on your property. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel to view our entire instructional video series. Once online, 
Keep clicking and like the Jaeger Pro Hall Control Systems Facebook page. If you have a story idea or just want to leave us a comment or suggestion, feel free to email us at info at jaegerpro.com.